before we begin the fight, let's take stock of what we know happened to the people who are fighting with us. From what I can tell, I have not received any notification that Anders died. Before we came here, there was we, we checked to get some preliminary reports on what had happened at the um, at the um, at Vigil's Keep when it was attacked and when it and the ongoing attack. So far, from what we had heard, because they were still under attack, fighting back, Anders was still alive. But who knows? We'll have to see in the future. Justice, it appears that he may be dead, but they're not sure. He was surrounded by and fighting a whole bunch of them. And he helped break up an assault by the enemy. So no one is by a massive dark spot assault. So no one is for sure for sure, but he may be dead. But from what we can tell so far, Andrews is still alive. From what we can tell, Nathaniel has not died yet. He's still fighting along with Anders, although they don't really get along. They have their normal tensions. Ogren, from what we can tell, is still fighting. It's still fighting very valiantly. The only thing that was passed on was a personal message from Nathaniel saying that he's come to turn he believes that he's comes to turn that in the face of death and he's not sure and from what we can tell he's still alive in the face of the battle of vigils keep he's come to turn with his sister's choices and his family's legacy basically right before we left and i probably should talk about this i received a note from a messenger that had ran to us as fast as possible from vigils keep and had updated us on this they weren't sure about justice he broke up a major assault by the Dark Spawn, but it appears he may possibly be dead, but they're not sure. Anders is still alive, the last they knew. Um, Nathaniel sent a personal message along with his message. He's, he's played a major commanding role in the fight because Veryl may be badly injured or dead, they're not sure. He fought bravely, but he may be badly injured or dead. And Nathaniel has played a major leading role. And he sent a personal message saying he accepts what Delilah has done, his sister, and he's moved beyond his father. Ogren is still fighting and doing his, is still and killing stuff, because of course he is, and of course he would. And from what we can hear, it's possible that Varel may have passed, may have been killed, but they're not sure. Again, we'll know more later, hopefully. I want you running up there. I want you to stay back. Here we go. Now the pieces fall into place. The Grey Warden comes, the instrument of the Father. Oh, and the Father, he is but a shadow. Oh, how my children protect me. How they love me. I have told you many times, Mother. I am not the Father. I am simply the architect. It does not change what you are! You took away that beautiful music, left us with nothing. It was a mistake to free you. It has left you with madness. I am truly sorry. The architect tends to free the Darkspawn, I trust him. Ah, but perhaps the Warden would like to hear how it was that the Father began the Blight. You want the source of the Archdemon? The one who brought all our kind to the surface? Here he is! The ritual. Damn. We should never have trusted any Darkspawn. Ah, there it is then. Unfortunate. 
I did find the old god, Athemio, but I did not wish another blight. I attempted my joining ritual. My hope was that this would free all Darkspawn, unravel the curse from its source. Alas, I was unlucky. Do you even think about the repercussions of your actions? Is it not the way of the Grey Wardens to do what must be done, in the name of combating the Blight? The Blight is a menace, both for your people and for mine. To end it requires sacrifice and risk. And how lonely the father was. How terrible to be the outcast, the outsider. He claims he wishes the Darkspawn to be free, but what he truly wants is to correct them. However you feel about what I have done, the mother is mad. She cannot be allowed to... Be gone, Shadow. You cannot harm the mother any more than you already have. And now the hero is alone. Oh. The mother knows your ways. You will not let her be, no. Not after what she's done. So it must end. It all must come crashing down! Perhaps we will hear the song again when we die. Oh, let it come. Let it come! Ah, uh, yeah, gross. Everybody. Run. Everywhere. Run. Okay. Uh-huh. So he's gonna do this crap. Seagrant. Nadia. Everybody. Everybody. Let's go. Go. Very well. God damn it, you fucking pieces of shit. Get the fuckers down! Fucking fire! Fire that fucking bitch! Now then! Everybody, start firing. Get up! Get up! Christ! Fired it over there. And another thing. It's not that hard. Right, of course you're doing this crap. This is what I want you to do. Yep. Now then. Ah, oh, she resisted. Shooting that. Ah, oh, you fucking bastards. Get the fuck up, god damn it. Get the fuck up, you son of a bitches. 
fucking pieces of shit. It's not that fucking difficult. Keep shooting at that piece of shit. You fucking pieces of shit. You fucking pieces of shit. Now, piss on it. Ah! So here's what we're going to do. Where is it? Where is it? Give me the stupid green crap. Yeah, you keep doing that crap. This is what I'm going to do. Now then. I am armed. All right. Keep shooting. Wait, save that one. Where is it? Where is it? Give me this. Get up! And given how things are. Ready! And then. Hit him again. That didn't work. Heal everybody. They're gonna chain lightning it again. Oh great. Alright. Let's get some more. Hit him with Death Cloud. Oh, Jesus. We don't want anyone to be too close. All right, good. Get up! Later. OK. 
Okay. Firestorm. And again. Okay. And of course he did it again. Who's got it? I do. You know what? shooting. Take this home. Hopefully. Myri, not yet. Sigrun. Got it. That's it. Got her. Oh, right in the mouth. Okay. After the death of the mother, the remaining darkspawn forces scattered and fled back into the deep roads. The raids on Amaranthium came to an abrupt end. The architect apparently kept his word gathering his remaining disciples to follow the rest of their kind back underground. Those Grey Wardens and other nations were appalled to hear of the Architect's continued existence, but were unable to track him down despite years of effort. Some within the Order have claimed that the Architect's survival guarantees another blight, and yet the Deep Roads have lately been quieter than any can recall. Most have resignedly decided that it is now in the Maker's hands. Word of the Grey Warden's heroic salvation of Amaranthine spread like wildfire. When the magnitude of the losses at Vigil's Keep came to light, sympathy drove generous donations for all, from all over Ferelden into the region's coffers. Amaranthine was restored to her former glory within a year, Vigil's Keep in five. Because of the Warden's support for law and order in Amaranthine, Constable Aden and his men were able to distribute the smuggler's goods to the battered survivors in the grueling days that followed the Darkspawn defeat. The Darkspawn Messenger, set free, after joining the Wardens in the Battle of Amaranthine, struck out on his own. The city soon buzzed with stories of a cloaked but lisping figure who aided travelers in danger. At the same time, reports of isolated cases of the Darkspawn disease emerged. No one connected the two. So far, for the most part, I'm satisfied with what we've done. We've built up Amaranthine. Vigil's Keep appears to be doing well. We took care of the Mother. I don't mind the Architect fleeing back. If he works against the dark side of the dark spawn, we'll see. But I am concerned about how his behavior demonstrates the need to have control on mages. Not as restrictive and brutal as the current chantry method. 
I think, a mixture of phylacteries and bringing them into the system as, say, regulators themselves, working alongside Templars would be more helpful. There needs to be a system of regulation, but it could be more pleasant and judicious and fair and equitable and balanced. Although the war, de but I am concerned about the messenger spreading the dark spawn disease, even if it's unintentional, or it may be intentional, who knows. Although the war devastated many farms in the Arling, all agreed the loss would have been greater without soldiers for protection. The farm holders developed a certain reverence for the warden commander, as well as an ongoing reliance on the Grey Wardens for order and protection, which can be fine as long as we don't get too politicized, like what happened with Sophia Dryden. So far, okay. Too bad we couldn't help more farms, but so far, so good. Vigils keep stood alone against the horde of Darkspawn. The, the initial reports so far sound good and are confirmed. The Mother's forces outnumbered the Vigil's defenders many times over. That looks much better. That's how a keep should look. Solid, dwarven architecture. Thank you, Voldrick. Even Dworkin probably helped a little bit. Good work. I love it. Mwah. We just need to put actual stone towers over this and build up those battlements more. Instead of having this lighter wood stuff. But it's beautiful. Looks mwah. magnifique. It's just magnifique, much better, far superior to them what became before. But the sturdy dwarven walls proved impervious to any boulder and ogre could throw. <laughs> you better believe it. <laughs> and we're going to do the same thing in the Amaranthi. We're going to transform that city. We're going to dwarvenify it. <laughs> yes. Yes. We're going to do the same thing in the Amaranthi, including that area outside that needs work. We have a lower work. We'll have a lower area for people to live. We'll extend the walls and build better living quarters. The vigil soldiers, clad in silverite, each felled a dozen dark spawn before they died. It's unfortunate they died, but war, and they're doing much better, killing a dozen before. The vigil held one night, then two, then a week, and eventually the attacking horde broke upon her walls. The keep developed an almost mythic reputation. The few survivors immortalized in song and legend. Thank you very much, Heron and Wade, who I hope both survived, for, 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 for creating wonderful armor for my troops. The vigil became a trading hub that would eventually eclipse the city of Amaranthi, with traders reassured by guards continually patrolling the pilgrim's path. But prosperity bed scheming and treachery between merchants and nobles. Mm -hmm. Testing the commander's patience for many years to come. It's still worth it. There's always a cost to everything. Almost always. And it's still definitely worth it. And it's still definitely good overall. Peace allowed the wardens to replenish their numbers. Soon vigils keep bore a capable army with wardens at its core. From their ranks emerged new heroes to challenge threats to Amaranthine and all of Ferelden. Sounds good. Through taxes and levies, the vigil was rebuilt. Years later, Voldrick Glavanak. Glavanak. Voldrick Glavanak. Glavanak. Voldrick Glav Glavanak stood on the battlements and pronounced that the defenses were acceptable. <laughs> he would never speak more highly of any human engineering. Of course not. Because it can only be acceptable if it's not dwarven. But it is dwarven, but just not true dwarven. But it's, it's close enough. And, I, I, and I'm so excited I have trouble saying Voldrick Glavanach's name properly because I'm so excited by this. Finally, after Denerum, after all these human cities, have all their blah walls and buildings, finally, a glorious dwarven masterpiece. Or the closest facsimile of possible facsimile of one, given the limitations of the human world. Not just the human world, but the surface world. But whispers of conspiracy against the wardens fell silent after a rash of accidents and disappearances culminated in the apparent suicide of Ban Esmeral. The nobles of Amaranthine remained dutiful. Some even suggested they were cowed into submission, probably because of my strategic surgical strike against the, the armed conspiracy. Among the many legends that the vigil spawned was one of the great heroes of the next age, a sheep herder turned soldier by the name of Sir Alec the Valiant, who eventually founded an order of knights that lasted a thousand years. Sir Alec was the one who I sent in to be conscripted because he wanted to feed his family. I made the right choice there. And he engaged in theft because he wanted to feed his family. I made the right choice there. The commander's blade vigilance, crafted from the bones of an ancient dragon, was boldly stolen by Antivan crows. Ugh. Zevron, I need to talk to you. I want my sword back. You've got to help me. 
but little brother Zev. The blade changed hands many times thereafter. Come on, Zev, Ryan, you gotta help me get this back. With some master swordsmen pursuing the weapon their entire lives. Zev, Ryan, you've gotta help me get that sword back. Some claim that this legendary blade has had a life of its own, and that its power is steadily growing. Zev, Ryan, you've gotta help me get that sword back. Dwork and Glavanak further refined his Larium sand explosives, but left the warden's employ after Kunari mercenaries tried to assassinate him. Although the dwarven bombardier took his secrets with him, the learned say he left clues for others to follow in his footsteps. Oh, Dworkin. The vigil soldiers wearing the distinctive silverette armor that Master Wade crafted, and I hope Wade and Haran did well, came to be known as the Silver Order. Under the tutelage of the wardens, the Silver Order developed into one of Ferelden's most revered military forces, a lasting memory of the vigil's famous commander, as it should be. With Volana and the architect gone from the region, the pilgrim's path began to see traffic again. The massacre of the militiamen and the merchants, however. <sighs> yep, Volana, I didn't fully hold you account for this, just like I didn't hold Avernus. I let mercy get into the way of things. I let hope and naivete get in the way of things. Led to hostilities between the neighboring human settlements and any Dalish clans that passed by. See, Volana? One human villager soon kidnapped and murdered a Dalish child. I hope we caught him down and punished him as he deserved. The clans reacted by giving the Wending Wood a wild birth, but both sides know that at some point the elves will return for revenge. Thanks, Valana. I should have pushed her harder on this. I should have pushed her harder on this. I should have done more to reform her. I shouldn't have been as nice to her as I was. It's the same problem I had with Avernus. It's one of the reasons why you've also got to regulate uh, mages. Because look, you do have to regulate mages. Just not as brutally as, not just as ruthlessly as a chantry does. A few years, and I want to catch the guy who murdered that child. A few years after Cal Haral was emptied of Darkspawn, Orzammar began sending expeditions to recover the knowledge of smithing that had been lost within the Tide. Yes, I knew it, I knew it. Finally, good, going on the offensive. Good job, Balin. Keep pushing it. Push the line back. Push the line forward, Balin. Push the line forward against the Darkspawn. Eventually, House Helmy decided that Cal Haral was too important to be abandoned. At a tremendous cost to Dwarven lives, uh, they cleared the tunnels leading to Cal Haral of all Darkspawn, making the road between Orzammar and the fortress safe again. Cal Haral was reclaimed for Orzammar once and for all. Yes! <laughs> yes! Exactly what we need. Finally! Pushing back. Winning. Yes, yes, yes. I know the cost is great, but at some point, sometimes, when it comes to the center of gravity of the enemy, you just have to push in and, and, and to start pushing back. Because they push us back again and again and again. But with the discovery of Cal Chirac, now we've got Cal Haral back. I think we should try to go for Bonamar, maybe. But this is fantastic news, finally. I'm able to help my people and see them start moving forward. Bring the castles into this. They will help. Come on, Balin. You're supposed to be a reformer. As promised, Voldric and Dworkin presented Orzammar Shapert with the stone marker that told of how Cal Haral's castles had taken up arms against the Darkspawn. <laughs> yes! 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 Finally, good! The commander of the Grey was invited to Orzammar as a guest of honor at a feast commemorating the defenders of Cal Haral, as it should be. The Shaper read the names of the castles off the marker, and then provided over a ceremony to return them to the stone, as befitted warriors of their stature. Good! Although you should go to the castles now, and general and fit them out to be soldiers as well. Don't let the warrior cast or the nobility cast stop that. Come on. This is proof, Balin. Give them a chance. Have them go to Cal Haral and help defend it. Working with House Helmy. If House Helmy will have them, they're probably sticks in the mud, but, you know, do what we can. In time, the Arling began to forget the tales of apparitions in the Black Marsh, and ever so slowly, settlers drifted into the region. Scholars said the veil was still thin, and thus the area is still dangerous. But the people only cared that there were no there were no longer frightened whispers in the shadows. The village was slowly rebuilt. Okay, that's good. Twice the Baroness's mansion was rebuilt and occupied. Mistake, don't. Just raise the damn thing. Go in there, try to purify it, and and basically mark it off. Build a giant wall, build magic barriers, no one go there. Once by a wealthy merchant, and another time by an Elysian mage. Both died mysteriously. Big shock. 
Afterwards, the mansion was torn down completely and the site left untouched. Best choice. Build a wall around it. Build magical barriers around it. Just close that thing off. But the village appears to be okay. The survivors of the siege at Vigil's Keep hailed Anders and his magic for holding back hundreds of the assaulting darkspawn. In the ensuing victory celebration, the men dragged the mage to the fire to engage him in a drinking contest. And of course, Anders would lose. <laughs> okay, so he made it. Anders remained with the Grey Wardens a few years longer, training the Order's next generation of mages. But when the Circle Tower called on him to deliver a lecture on the nature of the architect, much to the Templar's dismay, Good! This is progress! Anders told the Commander of the Grey that his time with the Wardens was over. And yet, not two months later, Anders returned to the Order. E ever after, the Wardens were his home and his lasting companions. I don't know if they will remain. He has such a wanderlust and an independent streak. But we'll see, for now. And it's nice that they were open to him. Valana never saw her clan again, but neither did she forsake her Dal Dalish culture, nor her sharp tongue, nor her quick temper. And I don't mind all that, but the quick temper, she needs more discipline. That's a concern. Because of all the people who died, and the problems that the Dalish now have, because she helped contribute to that child being killed, although it was the human who was responsible must be punished. But she helped create those conditions. The human who did it is responsible must be punished. Does not justify it, and I want to bring him to justice. Valana's interactions with other Grey Wardens changed her opinions of humankind significant. Okay, this sounds good. Changed her opinions of humankind significantly. Shortly after the mother's defeat, dark spawn stragglers who remained on the surface attacked human village. Valana was the only warden nearby and defended the village single handedly. Good. She did not sneer once. I feel better about this than I do with the Vernas. I think that a lot of this can be attributed to the joking that she did with Sigrid, but especially Nathaniel. I think Nathaniel was very did more than I did here. I think he was much more there. I wonder, if Nathaniel had come with us to the Black Marsh, I bet Valana would not have said what she said about the villagers, because she would not want to look bad in the eyes of Nathaniel. Or he would have basically come back and, and his remonstrance against her would have deeply shamed her. So perhaps in that respect, instead of Myrie, I should have brought Nathaniel with her because he exerted a very positive influence on her. And perhaps he could have gotten through to her in ways that I did not. About the importance of duty, of noblesse oblige, of the fact that how do you expect people to treat elves properly if they don't care for others as well? Even though they have a justified grievance, which I do not deny. But this is good, so I don't feel so bad. I feel much better now. I feel so much better now. Avernus still burns, though, but this, no, I, there's a good thing that came out of this. Okay, I don't feel so bad about Valana now, and I think it would have been better if I'd brought Nathaniel, maybe, instead of Myrie. Years later, on an expedition in the Deep Roads, Valana took off on her own after saying she had seen Sarani in the shadows. I hope she did. The other warden searched for her, but she was truly gone. Well, I hope she survived, and I hope she found Sarani, and I hope they're happy together. And maybe they can find a way to make connections with the elven clans again. And, but I'm proud of her that she did that for that village. It helped to atone for what she'd done. Maybe I bet Nathaniel played a positive role in all this. Nathaniel managed to survive the battle at Vigil's Keep. A good man. I'm very proud of him and respect him a great deal. Leading a spirited defense in the last minutes to protect his family home. That, that ferocity impressed many of his fellow soldiers who hoisted him to their shoulders, to their shoulders, and paraded him around the courtyard when the battle was done. <laughs> he deserved it for the positive effect he played on Valana, because I credit her change of character much more to him than to myself, for helping to lead the battle after Varel fell, for doing so many, I think Varel fell from what I heard, understand, and for doing so much, and for overcoming so much about his family and moving beyond that, and showing that even though he's not a lord like his father, he behaves as a true noble should. He demonstrates noblesse oblige and a duty and service and a higher calling. And in many ways, he would probably be a much greater leader of the Great Warden than his father ever could have hoped to aspire to be. Over the next years, Nathaniel dedicated himself to the Order and to clearing the blemishes on his family's name. After saving Taran Fergus Kusland from a bandit attack, a portion of Amaranthine was returned to the house. Good. And the Kuslands, this is interesting because the Kuslands and the house did not get along. And in fact, the Howes, I think, initially threw the Kuslans out of power. 
turn, Fergus Cousin wasn't there. They threw him out of power. I assume that Fergus Cousin was restored to power, but the Howes basically did an assassination and a strike and an ambush on the Cousins. So it's good that he saved them. That helps bring it back, and hopefully they can create a positive connection there. I'd almost suggest a marriage, but I still think that he and Valana would make a better pair, but it's too bad that they didn't get together. I think that would have been wonderful, but I think being good friends is enough. We don't have to assume every relationship is a, is a, is a romantic one. I think that his and Volano's relationship was proper, ultimately. And maybe he can marry him to the Kuzlins. We'll see. Nathaniel passed the holding to Delilah's son. And when a new castle was eventually built there, a statue of Nathaniel was erected in his courtyard. Court yeah, he deserves it. Good man, good man, good man. He demonstrated great maturity, great force of character, and he truly grew beyond what he'd been. Justice fought valiantly at the Battle for Vigil's Keep, but before the victory of Horn sounded, a darkspawn sword removed Kristoff's head. It was, of course, unclear whether the spirit of justice perished or simply departed. At the least, Kristoff's wife, Ora, was finally able to, re to claim her husband's ashes. <sighs> it's too bad he died, but I don't think his spirit is gone. His spirit went somewhere, and that's an interesting question. Because they killed Justice, but he can always inhabit a different dead body. I'm glad he did not inhabit Myri, because I know that Myri's still around. And she's creating a new life for herself, a new existence for herself, becoming a new person, and sort of thinking beyond just fighting Darkspawn. And in fact, we've put her into the Silver Order, and she's working with the Silver Order as one of its leading commanders. And she's looking forward to becoming a captain and eventually an executive officer. Perhaps someday she'll become a commander. But she's sort of building a new life for her. She's even starting to enter into relationships and friendships with other people. So she's moving beyond just her obsession with killing Darkspawn. And we've talked her out of taking the joining. Because the spirit of sacrifice sacrificed itself for her. We don't want her to die. So I think maybe justice is still around. I hope so. I hope my friend is, and that he gets to learn and experience what the human world is like. It was like he <clears throat> was, but if not, at least he was happy, and he, and he served his duty. But I think justice, the spirit is somewhere around, and he just fled to a different body. I hope so. Although Sagroon seemed intent on leaving for a calling, departing for the blue, deep roads to finish what she started in Cal Harrell, the warden commander had a knack for finding important and absolutely urgent things to occupy the dwarf. <laughs> yes, good, good, good. She's got to stay alive. She's my sister. She, she, we understand each other. Of all the people I've worked with, she's the one who I felt closest to as being family to help fill the hole and the void of losing my original family when I was fighting the Archdemon. I mean, I look forward to introducing her to Leliana. Everyone, in fact, but especially her. And to seeing Leliana again, because I really miss Leliana a lot. And also meeting Batty Bubby, Buddy, my puppy, who I think is with, who in fact is with Leliana right now. And I missed them both very much. I even kept her old dancing shoes to give her back to Leliana when she comes back. I miss her so much, love her so much. So it's great that Sigrun will be able to meet with her. And of course I was going to do that. And the best thing is, is that my choices about letting the architect go and working with him did not so antagonize her that she turned away against me, that she was willing to respect and listen to me so when I basically pushed her away from going out and getting herself killed. So I'm glad that that much of the friendship was able to be maintained. And so Sagrun delayed her long walk into the darkness for several decades, even though she never stopped cracking jokes about needing to throw herself at death. <laughs> Excellent. I hope she stayed alive longer than I did. In fact, I'm positive she did. She took the joining after I did, I'm hoping. So this is wonderful news. At Vigil's Keep, keep Ogren rallied a last-minute defense of the gate, taking on two ogres simultaneously to allow others time to regain the courtyard. He eventually passed out from blood loss, and the alcohol didn't help Ogren because it's a blood thinner. So you probably could have stayed up and going if you hadn't drank before, and you know you did, because you used it to help get you berserk. You got angry drunk. Don't deny it. And when he awoke weeks later, nobody was more surprised than he to discover he had been credited as a hero. Ogren continued to regale young warden recruits with tales of his prowess in both battle and bed. The last one is a joke. 
His drinking games prompted at least one recruit to declare that she'd rather reattempt the joining than lift another bug. At the warden commander's urgent demands, Arwen took a more active role in his child's life. Good. He better. No divorced dad, I'm running away crap here. He visited Felsey often, and he gave her money and support and care and, put a sh and, and was supportive and wrote letters, which the warden commander graciously proofread, nearly every week. Good. Good, good, good. So you supported them, you sent them money, you did what a father should have done. And keep on. And you be supportive of her and help her out. Give her emotional support and caring, not just money. You're not don't just be a paycheck. Not just to the kid, but to her as well. They both need it. Good. This makes me much happier about the situation. Because this made me very angry. As for the savior of Ferelden, that's me. She did not remain as commander of the Great for long. The Darkspawn were no longer a real concern. The blight well and truly over. It was time for her to move on. It was time for me to move on. Some claim the commander reunited with the red-haired bard known as Leliana. This what that's what happened. That is true. I came back to Leliana. And that we both adventured together still. That's correct. That's what we do. The pair were spotted together in Denrim a year after the Blight's End. You bet we were. And Doggy was there too. Doggy Din Din. Batty Buddy. No matter the truth, and that is the truth, the commander never did return to Vigil's Keep. That's fine. I've got Leliana and Batty Buddy, and that's all that matters. And Sir Grun is okay. 